guys, welcome to the video today. And today we're gonna to talk about is computer science still worth it in 2024? A computer science has become a very popular major. So if we go back 10 years ago, or even, you know, four, five years ago, computer science wasn't as popular and it basically guaranteed you a six-figure software engineer job. Now you have a whole bunch of people doing it because people are aware of the income potential and people are trying to break into tech. So you had so many people now trying to do it that it became a little saturated. Now, do I think computer science is still worth it in 2024? The answer is it depends, but I think that yes, it is still worth it. Uh, right now, I think that the tech market not being as good as before is more of an economy issue and not really a oversaturation issue. Granted, we do have more computer science majors than before, but at the same time, we also have a lot more jobs uh, coming available as well. And I think when the economy turns around, you'll have a like a tech hiring spree as well. I don't think it'll ever return to the point where it's computer science degree, instant job. You'll probably have to work a little hard for it, but once you get in the door, you're permanently in the door. And once you have experience on your resume, then you can go job to job. So that's you, just getting your first job is really tricky. But once you have your first job, you should be able to, you know, jump jobs more easily. And you'll be once you're in, you're in. So I think computer science is still worth it. It's one of the only bachelor degrees where you can make a six figure income. You can make six figures with other bachelor degrees, such as a uh, nursing degree. Uh, especially if you work in a busy state like California. But for the most part, most six-figure jobs are either, one, you're going to have a master's degree, or two, maybe you start your own business, or it's like a very niche job. But for the most part, a lot of bachelor degrees don't pay six figures. So that's why a computer science degree, and any tech degree for that matter, not just computer science, is still very well worth it in my opinion, because it does have six-figure potential, and this economy, especially if you live in a state like California or New York or Texas, uh, like any kind of expensive state, you do try to you want to aim for six figures in a comfortable life. Uh, life is not all about money, but it's about having freedom. It's about having, you know, like I don't know how old some of you are watching this, what your age is, but if you're odds are if you're like 18 to 24, you might not know like how stressful life can get if you don't make enough money. But the older you get, you know, you do want a big cushion, you do want a sizable income, because if you don't have that, it's very difficult to live a comfortable life and you have stress just dangling over you at all time. Those of you thinking about doing a computer science degree are already in the process and you are fearing that you might not get a job, I will teach you step by step on like what the process is and how you can get there. Like I said, you're gonna have add a little extra things to your resume. Um, you're gonna have to prepare for leak code style interviews, which I will explain what leak code is. I've been meaning to do a leak code uh, style video and I will release like a free ebook that I've been meaning to release, um, which took me a long time to put together actually. And that will go over, you still need like a data structures class to really understand that. So if you've never taken a data structures class, you'll have no idea what you're reading really, but I will release that soon. I will make that kind of video very soon. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, the ebook is already kind of like done, but it's more of a guide than an ebook. But you know that will uh, I'll release that when I make the video, even though it's already finished. Um, but anyways, guys, like don't don't dread it. You know you can still if you're motivated, if you're determined, and also disciplined you can find your first engineering job. You can find your first software engineer job, your first data job, whatever field you want to work in. You can absolutely do that with enough determination. Like I said, good cover letter, good resume, uh, maybe find a small internship. And, you know, times are rough, so you might want to find a free internship if that's the only thing you can find. Experience is experience. You want to put anything in that experience section that you possibly can. You also want to build up your portfolio if you can as well. Although experience is the number one uh, benefactor that will get you a job. But the college degree you need for like 90% of computer science jobs these days, 90% of engineering jobs or equivalent degree. 
any tech degree, but computer science, software engineering, if you want like a software engineer job, those two degrees would be the gold standard. So I think the degree is still worth it. I think that the field is still growing and that the economy will turn around. Can I guarantee these things? No, I cannot. But like I said, economies go in cycles. And I think that right now we're in a bit of a bear market. And I think at some point we will be in a bull market. And then you'll start seeing a lot more, uh, a lot more people hired. Now, will it ever be like the tech frenzy like before? Maybe not. But I do think you'll see a lot of people start to get hired whenever the economy does change. Plus, you are seeing the tech field expand more and more and more. More tech companies are becoming a thing. I think in the future, you could see so many more tech jobs. I think the field is going to double. This is, this is not a bubble. You are going to see more tech companies pop up. You're going to see more tech jobs pop up. And at some point, there will be a time again where supply cannot meet demand. And that was the tech frenzy hiring from before, and that the supply could nowhere meet the demand. So just computer science grads were getting hired for six-figure incomes right off the bat. Now, there's a ton of computer science graduates now. But at the same time, the field is growing at about the same pace as the graduates. So I don't think you really need to worry about it too much. The only way you wouldn't get a job is if you're not motivated enough, if you put in no extra effort. You know, like... If you just get your degree and you start applying for jobs with nothing else added to your resume and like you're not even slapping cover letters on there, like even if you apply for a thousand jobs, like you might not get it because you're not really putting any effort there. You did put effort into getting your degree, but a degree does not, a degree alone does not get you a job anymore, especially in tech or for, I would say almost any job for that matter. You kind of have to go above and beyond, like write a good cover letter, uh, make a good LinkedIn page. Or if you don't want to do a LinkedIn page, make a personal website, which I think is even better. Like your personal website will be like an online resume that looks very clean. You want to attract employers any way you can. You want to impress the hiring manager any way you can. So if you can put on your resume like yourname.com, that looks pretty impressive. Or like a coding blog or a YouTube channel. Anything that makes you stand out. And you can mention that in your cover letter as well. That like, hey, I have this blog or I have this YouTube channel. Um, you know, I'm really passionate about this job. I uh, would, you know, stuff like that. Like that can give you a leg up on the competition. So there's many, many things you can do to go out of your way to get the job. Plus, if you apply enough, you will get an interview somewhere. And that's where you need to have a really good grasp of solving leak code problems. And once you get an interview because it it's a numbers game at some point you are bound to get a software engineer interview or whatever job you're applying for you need to be able to solve that interview now some of these are easier than others especially the small to medium companies the larger companies especially fang will put you through the ringer where you have to solve like a medium leak code uh, a hard leak code and just you know really talk to multiple interviewers um so the larger companies, unless you really, really know your stuff, I'd probably aim for a small to medium company. Uh, plus, larger companies like Fing don't really hire new grads unless you have a master's. If you have a master's, then yes, these large companies will hire a new grad, but you still have to pass your uh, lead code style interview. So you would need a bachelor's and master's in computer science or software engineering. It doesn't matter the school. I've seen people with absolutely no name schools on both the bachelor's and the master's uh, get into Fang. So it doesn't matter where you go to school, to be honest. Um, but if you want, if you want your very, very, very first job to be Fang, where it comes with a very nice salary but a lot of hard work, then one, you'll probably have to move to California or uh, you know wherever the headquarters for these companies are, and two. Like I said, you have to be really prepared to pass these really rigorous interviews. Um, so if you're not familiar with Leak Code, you can go check it out right now and try to solve those problems. But like I said, you're going to have to have a very strong understanding of data structures and algorithms, uh, like a college level class, and not just a college level class. I think you need extra on top of that to really start Leak Code. Like Leak Code, the problems on there can be very difficult and the only reason they're difficult is you don't exactly understand what you're looking at. You know, so 
Instead, some people solve it in a way where they just memorize the solution. And then companies, this is the lazy way, and I really don't recommend it. Companies just copy and paste problems off leak code. A lot of them. They don't come up with their own problems, their own interview questions. So they'll just copy and paste it from leak code. They'll use it from leak code. And if you wanted, you can go on leak code and like for like two to 500 problems, you can just memorize the solution. You'll still have to talk your way through it on the interview, but you can kind of wing that. But I don't really recommend this method because, you know, you're still going to have no idea what you're doing. You know, so I would really recommend understanding it. And that way you won't really be as nervous on the interview. And if you do need to use data structures and algorithms, you actually have knowledge on how it's working. You understand what it's doing, et cetera. You know, so that is the lazy way. A lot of people do get a job that way for being real. I'm very realistic on my channel. Um, like if I was going to tell you everybody gets a job by the book, by like the correct way it should be done, I'd be totally lying. You know, a lot of people take shortcuts. So I don't recommend that way. I recommend actually learning it. I recommend actually knowing what you're doing on that leak code style problem. You know, don't just memorize the solution. Don't even look at the solution until like you have a good grasp on how to solve it or you actually do solve it. So once again, to go over computer science and software engineering, do I think it is worth it in 2024? I, I think it is still worth it. I'm going to go into a government website, BLS, right now, and I'll show you that the growth is still pretty good. And so I'm on the BLS government website, and, you know, this site is not the end-all be-all, but it is a government actual website with facts on it. So software developers, this, this is kind of a mix of a few jobs, but software developers, a.k.a. software engineers, 130 median pay. Uh, this is like the first job, you know, 17% um, faster than average. So 17% is not like amazing, but it's still faster than average. It's still growing faster than, you know, the amount of people looking for it. So it's still growing pretty fast. And I still think it's very much worth it. I will reanalyze that a few years from now. But as of right now today, I think majoring in computer science, software engineering, and tech in general is still very much worth it. Uh, here's another one, data scientists. And this also includes data analysts uh, and other data jobs, data engineer. It's all coupled in here as one. So 108,000 bachelor's degree, although a data engineer and data scientist a lot of times does need a master's, um, but a data analyst you can get with just a bachelor degree, 36% faster than average, which is really good. So and we can look up uh, cybersecurity too. Cybersecurity, as I've said many times, is not really an entry-level uh, type of job. So 33% growth, which is really, really good. Like I said, you just have to find a couple years of some kind of IT job before you start applying to cyber jobs, uh, which is information security analyst, um, based security. Like if you're going to look for a cyber job, you wouldn't even type in cybersecurity. For the most part, you're going to type in security analyst, and that, that would be like your first cyber job, but getting a cyber job as your first job, getting a security job as your first job, uh, like, like let's take the whole cyber word out of it, which is pretty, you know, it's, the word cyber is marketing. Uh, technically, it's cybersecurity, but it's you're looking for a security job, a uh, security analyst, you know. So... You don't get this as your first job usually, unless you went to a really big school and you know, like you find some entry level job, but for the most part, not going to happen. So you want to find some kind of entry level IT job, um, or even some entry level support job, maybe a cloud support job or, or something along those lines, do that for a couple years and then try to apply for information security jobs and network your butt off on LinkedIn and just really message like every hiring manager you can message when you apply for certain jobs, eventually you will get your foot in the door. You know, maybe you can find like a, a consulting job at first, uh, because consulting jobs sometimes are a little easier to land. They're just a little strange. Um, at f like consulting jobs are hit or miss. Like some of them are legitimate, and then sometimes they're like, uh, 
let's just say you don't really know what you're going to expect in a consulting job. Um, and it's consulting firms can fold at any time as well. But anyways, tech is still looking good, guys. Uh, let's go back to full video here. So that's the end of today's video. And do I think tech jobs are still worth it? Tech degree is still worth it? Yes, I do. So if you're out there getting a tech degree, I still think it is, you know, it's not the golden ticket like it was five years ago, but that can change with the economy. But it's still better than a lot of other degrees, at least for career prospects, for income prospects. You know, a lot of college degrees are just not worth it at all. You know, and a lot of people get angry at me for saying, hey, don't major in that, that major, you know, don't do that, especially a lot of different liberal arts majors. Tech majors are never a bad thing. You have to major in something in college and tech majors are great. You know, they have, if you play your cards right, if you're motivated enough, you can parlay that tech degree, especially a computer science or software engineering degree into a, you know, six figure job. Maybe not your first job. Um, maybe it'll take you a little while. Maybe you have to add other things to your resume, but you eventually will parlay it into a six figure job. And I still think it is very much worth it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you, if I helped you at all, if you liked the video at all, please like, and subscribe and please comment if you can as well. Doing any three of those things helps the video go out to more people that have never seen my channel, which I am trying to grow more and more. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you. I'll have more videos on degree hacking and WGU and also more videos on career stuff as well. So thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time.